أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا فعلمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه واجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه وادخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين آمين سو التكبير is an instruction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verses of, of the fasting, He mentioned, وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So the takbir is a must. For every worshipping. So in the prayer we have takbir. In the Eid time there is takbir. In the Hajj time there is takbir. So a takbir is recommended because you glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is the best Zikr which will open your heart and bring it towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the takbir you announce from your heart that you believe is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than anything else. You glorify Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is more important than everything else. He is more important than your job, than your business, more important than your family, more important than your needs, than your nafs, more important than everything else in our life. That is the meaning of Allahu Akbar. And the scholar said, Allahu Akbar also means that you are unable to describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he should be described. You are unable. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِ You cannot, you cannot get the whole knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, that means that you believe that he is the only one who is perfect. You believe in his perfection, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the meaning of Allahu Akbar. And Allahu Akbar, it gather your heart, bring it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I mentioned yesterday, that with every movement in your prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps reminding you that he is Allahu Akbar. Don't go away. Don't let heart let your heart to skip outside the prayer. Stick your heart in the prayer with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So once you and you announce Allahu Akbar, there is a huge changes, as I mentioned earlier, happening to you when you announce these two words. So the first thing the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا قَامَ الْعَبْدُ يُصَلِّي If the servant stand for the prayer, means you make the takbir, then the angels will bring all of his sins and they put it on his head and shoulder. So every time you bow down or you make sujood, some of your sins will fall down. 
This is authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim. And the second one, the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He come forward with His face to the one who stand for Him in His prayer. And He will stay with you as long as you are there for Him until you move away. And the scholar said, moving away, either you move your eyes. That is what the shaitan wants. He wants you to move your eyes. Allah, I have seen people, they are praying, they are focused, but their eyes is going this way or that way. You lost it. Your prayer, goodbye. When the Prophet ﷺ was asked, Ya Rasulullah, what about moving our eyes or heads when our, in our prayer? He said, this is the stealing of the shaitan. He steal your prayer. We have to resist that. So the third one, that a shaitan named Khanzab, is coming to you, trying his best to move you away from the prayer. And it happened with the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet himself, he was not even survived from this shaitan. Until he annoyed the Prophet ﷺ in his prayer, until the Prophet ﷺ, he fed up from him and he catch him. He catch him. And the Prophet ﷺ said to the companions, I hold him from his neck until the cold of his sal saliva touches my hand and I wanted to tight it in the, in the pillar of the masjid. But I remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Sulaiman a king or a power which is not allowed to anybody else. So that's why I released him. So even the Prophet ﷺ was not survived from this shaitan. You think he's going to leave you alone? He will never leave you alone. So you cannot defeat him if your heart is still thinking. What shall I do? If your heart is still struggling, you can't. So you have to empower your faith you have to get all these feelings what we talk about it from the beginning of the series that is your tool to get rid of this shaitan and then when you start when you announce Allahu Akbar so you cannot eat you cannot drink you cannot talk. One time at the beginning of the prayer, so the companions, they were behind the Prophet ﷺ in Salatul Jama'ah. So one of the companions, he sneezed. Then his brother said, Yarhamuka Allah to him. Then at the end of the prayer, the Prophet ﷺ, he called him. He said, in our prayer, this is not allowed. You cannot talk to your brother. You cannot tell anything. This prayer is to glorify Allah and to make tasbih for Allah. That is the main reason for the prayer. And your vision, your eyes, should be stick forward to your sujood place. So when you announce your prayer, all these things happened. And we have, in order to have the khushu, we should 
get the feelings you are standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholar said, if you behave well from the first beginning of your prayer, if you behave well, then the king will allow you to enter his place and his kingdom. And then he will offer you his blessings. But if you misbehave from the beginning, then he may not allow you to get his blessings and his rewards. And the, the good behavior started from the first moment you announce Allahu Akbar. So imagine you are invited to meet a king or a queen and you want to enter the hall. So how are you going to behave? How are you going to move? You stand where you are requested to stand and you never talk until you get the permission to talk and you are not allowed to start moving with your heads all the way looking here and there you have to bow down that is how you should behave now you are in front of the king the true king so the takbir is the proper behavior to enter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Hadra means to be close to him to feel that he's in front of you Al Imam Ibn Al Qayyim said and from the signs of the loving of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bow down your head and to make your eyes looking down not looking up this is of the best respect you offer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet sallallahu said if you pray, do not move your head or move your eyes or do not look to the sky. By Allah, Allah will take your vision when you look somewhere else. So Allah is capable to take your vision. And the Prophet ﷺ in another hadith, he swear by Allah for those who are looking up, that Allah will never let their vision to come back to them again. So it's a matter of respect. It's a matter of haybah. You feel that you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Imam ibn al-Qayyim said that the kings they don't like whoever look strongly to their face. You know what that mean? In another hadith to the Prophet وسلم, he said, if you look sharp to your father, you misbehave to him. That is your father. So you cannot look sharp, look strong to his face. You misbehave. You misrespect him. This is disrespect action. So what about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You cannot look that look forward or here and there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is acknowledging the good behavior of the Prophet 
when he was in Al Mi'raj. And he said about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that, that means that the eyes of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never go here and there looking around him and never lift his eyes up. He was bowing down, looking down. He was in a special meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amr ibn al-As. We all know who is Amr ibn al-As. One of the strongest warriors in Islam. And one of the smartest people in his time. Amr ibn al-As, he's the leader who opened Egypt and north of Africa. So Amr ibn al-As said, By Allah, how long I spend with the Prophet ﷺ, I never look to his face because of the fear I have towards him. And if you ask me to describe how the Prophet ﷺ looks like, I don't know. He's a companion, but he never look and focus to the face of the Prophet ﷺ. This is called Hayba. Hayba. And the Prophet ﷺ was having this Hayba. If you look to him from far away, you, you fear him. One time, a Arabi, a Badu man, came from the desert and he asked, where is Muhammad? So, وسلم, so they told him, Hada huwa al wadi, the one with the bright face. So when he looked to the Prophet, he started shivering. Hayba. He has this dignity and honor. So that's how we should behave. Now, how to, to perform the takbir? I will not take long. So the takbir, you have to lift your hands. So lifting your hands, number one, your fingers has to be open, fully open. It's not like that. It has to be fully open. Number two, it's not fully open like that and not closed. It has to be medium. That is the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, where shall I lift my hands? Up to here? Or up to here, to chest? There is two standards for the Prophet ﷺ. Number one, up to your shoulders. Number two, up to your ears. So there is two situations. Anyone is correct. Both of them are correct and narrated from the Prophet ﷺ. Now, the saying of the takbir, is it with that with, it is synchronized with my movement or before or after? All of them are correct. And the Prophet ﷺ used to do it, all, all of them. Means, either you say Allahu Akbar, then you move your hands. Or you say, Allahu Akbar together. Or you say, Allahu Akbar. So either before, so the takbir goes before you move your hands, or with, or after. All of them is authentic from the Prophet wasallam. Now a question, why we are lifting our hands? Why Allah asked us to lift our hands? Surrender, exactly. You surrender yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ So this is the idea of lifting your hands and saying the takbir, either up or down, and how is the position of your fingers. It's very important. And now the scholars, they are saying, to get proper khushu' you have to change. Don't always stick with one thing, with one movement. Keep changing.
keep changing. Why? They said that will help you to have a better khushu' because you become more focused. It's not a habit. You repeat it every time. It is not a habit. So you need to change. Why? Number one, because you bring your heart, you open your heart. Number two, this is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. He used to change وسلم, And that's how we need to change. And if you change now, you are following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, which many people, they are not doing it. Many people, they are not changing. They stick to this. When you tell him, okay, you can do that. No, 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 no. Why no? This is the sunnah, the sunnah of the Prophet that you change the way you are performing this action. So this is the sunnah. To keep changing, that will help you in your khushu'. Number two, you are following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And who is following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make his heart live when the hearts are getting dead. When the time of fitna, your heart will be alive, aware so, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahumma jma'na ala ma yurdiq. Waj'alna min al-mutahabbina feek. Allahumma jma'al jama'na hadha jama'an mubarakan marhuma. Wa tafarruqana min ba'dihi ma'asuma. Wa la taj'al minna wa la fina shaqiyan wa la mahruma. Allahumma inna nas'aluka ridaka wal janna. Wa na'udhu bika min sakhatika wal nar. Allahumma inna nas'aluka ya arhama al-rahamin. Anta taqabbal minna salatana wa siyamana wa qiyamana wa dua'ana wa salih a'malina. Innaka anta al-karim al-rahim. Allahumma balighna laylat al-qadr. واجعلنا فيها من المقبولين اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدر واجعلنا فيها من المقبولين اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدر واجعلنا فيها من المقبولين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن هذه القلوب اجتمعت على محبتك واجتمعت على طاعتك راغبة يا رب في قربك اللهم يا أرحم الراحمين فأكرمنا يا الله بقرب منك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام وأكرمنا بخشوع يا أرحم الراحمين ارزقنا الخشوع في صلاتنا وارزقنا الخشوع في ذكرنا وارزقنا الخشوع في تلاوتنا وارزقنا الخشوع في صيامنا إنك أنت الكريم الرحيم اللهم إنا نسألك يا مولانا صحبة حبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرت ولا هما إلا فرجت ولا عيبا إلا سترت ولا مريضا لنا إلا شفيته وعافيت ولا حاجة لنا من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا يسترتها وقضيتها يا قاضي الحاجات يا مجيب الدعوات اللهم بدل سيئاتنا حسنات ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحانه وتعالى